All right, I wanted to talk about a uh, pretty big global problem. Um, it's been ramping up ever since 2019, really, um, back when we had the, the crummy planting season because of all the rains, the, the planting, the, the crops got planted late. And uh, I figured I'd start with uh, this article I wrote five months ago. Um, all the all the video links here are, are gone because my they're embeds from my old channel, which is gone. Um, but you see here, um, I've got this paragraph. It all comes tumbling down. The white horseman may have arrived, but famine has had a foot in the door for a while now. Corn yields are down from last year, and many other crops are experiencing the same trend for various reasons worldwide. Although my key source has been mysteriously edited in the past couple of days, I literally kicked myself for this so hard for not archiving it, but uh, it is what it is. This should be verifiable with a bit of digging into yield reports. Um, then I recommend ADAPT 2030. It's a channel that I'll link. I'm going to link several channels to people who keep track of this sort of thing in the description. Um, and I talk about uh, whatever the cause of these weather patterns might be, it's contributing to more than just crop loss due to flooding and cold temperatures. There's also a rodent boom in the forecast, which uh, I've, I've reposted that, uh, that rat video right before this, uh, sort of a primer. If you haven't watched that, check it out. I'll also, again, drop a link. There's a link in that, in that video's description to the original video done by this fellow, Yasana Ama Ventures. Um, but uh, I'll drop a link down here. Also, he's got a great channel. He follows this sort of thing and all sorts of global events. Very level-headed guy. Adapt 2030, not so much. He's a little kooky, uh, as I said here. But, you know, all in all, I can't really disagree with him a whole lot. He's just sort of got like that, that uh, hippy-dippy sort of vibe to him. We're speaking of which, we're going to jump over to uh, IceAgeFarmer.com, and this guy, he's got the hippy-dippy vibe, plus full-on schizophrenia. This guy, you know, he does a lot of uh, talking about uh, crops and, and things like that, trends that, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it, man. He just, he has, he's one of those people that he's got this idea in mind and he tries to shoehorn everything else into that narrative. So literally to him, literally everything that goes wrong in the world has to do with um, uh, the Illuminati trying to get you to eat bugs and uh, plant-based meat and stuff like that, which is happening. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that, you know, this guy he goes overboard <laughs> with trying to paint things that way but uh he's got this article here i'm going to link to this video and his channel and all that crap uh but he's got this article here um i forget how you pronounce this but i'm gonna call it derrico just because it sounds cooler uh the derrico corn crop catastrophe grain stores destroyed food prices developing um so it's really he's just shilling his video here but that that storm that came through this afternoon, uh, well, yesterday afternoon now, um, it took out my power, but that's the, the least of it. Uh, it did this to a number of grain silos, just absolutely destroyed them. That's all food that no one's going to be eating. Um, you can see it, it tore up all sorts of, uh, farming infrastructure. It really did a number out there, uh, not just on, on farms, but, you know, there's millions of acres of corn in Iowa that is ruined now because of that storm. Uh, <clears throat> it's all been flattened. I mean, this, this thing might have really just screwed us. But uh, it, it's not the only problem. Um, America's running out of aluminum cans. Now, this might sound a little silly because you can't 
eat aluminum cans. Canada is having the same problem also, um, probably elsewhere too. Um, but uh, obviously this is important for food distribution, mostly junk food and, and alcohol and stuff. But, you know, lots of things get put into cans. Uh, aluminum is needed for lots of other applications that revolve around food production. And uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I did want to point out that the last time we had an aluminum shortage like this was just before the Second World War. So it might have something to do with it. Uh, and then there's the locust. This was something I talked about back in the article here. Uh, you see this cute locust girl. Um, a disaster two years in the making, culminating in city-sized swarms capable of devouring entire fields in a matter of minutes. The hungry little devils have already affected more than a dozen countries, resulting in project the projected starvation of 80 million in Africa. And this was five months ago we got those projections. They're a lot higher now because the, uh, the swarms have not stopped. They've continued breeding um, and spreading. That's what this map is here. Uh, you can see they started over here in the Horn of Africa. They spread all the way into Niger. Um, and then this is sort of an active map. So they're no longer there in mass. They're still around. Uh, you see this is marking adult locusts. Um, they're, they're still out there, probably eating fields and stuff. And there's still swarms out here in the Horn, but they've flown over here to Yemen. They've already had their way with Yemen and for the most part moved on to Oman. And they flew across the Arabian Sea to India. And I'm not joking there. They didn't go up and around. Those crazy sons of bitches flew straight over this, uh, which is just insane. And right now the bulk of them is over here in India. But this, this map is imperfect because I know for a fact Kazakhstan has had a massive problem with these things uh, because China did a lot of PR about how much they were helping Kazakhstan with their locust problem. But this was all in China's interest because, you know, if you can halt it there, then you don't have to worry about them coming to China. But that's another aspect in which this map is imperfect because I know for a fact they are in Western China. Um, I've even heard reports that they've flown over the floods and they're now in Eastern China I've seen reports of them in, in uh, Eastern Europe, locust swarms, Southern Russia. Uh, so they're all over the place and it's, it's not being talked about here. Now, I, be I believe they've gotten it under control, but uh, there was a separate breed of locust swarming in Australia. And, you know, I don't know if it's to scale with this by any means, but uh, whatever damage they did, it's all going to add up. Um, when, it, when you come to the, uh, when you talk about the global food supply, and I know that's gonna piss some nationalists off, but at the end of the day, uh, the, this food that's being grown in these various countries, for the most part, it, it doesn't, it's not incorporated into the country. It belongs to, uh, um, honestly, corporations, and they're going to sell that food to whoever's gonna pay them the most for it unless there's some sort of action taken by various governments, which there probably will be eventually. Um, but then that could spur all sorts of other problems, you know, given the, uh, you know, the, the modern liberal idea, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, there is absolutely a, a global economy, whether you like it or not, uh, you have to, you have to take that into account. Um, there's also locusts out here in Argentina that have started moving up into Brazil. And I've seen reports of those same locusts all the way across South America and into Southern Mexico. And I do believe they're going to come up here into the States given enough time. Um, they, they've just, they have no reason to, there's stuff for them to eat down there right now. So I would expect them though, if I was you. So enough about the locusts, um, that explosion in Beirut, you've probably seen the grain silo that was pretty much totaled. I mean, 
it's amazing that it stayed standing, but uh, it's believed that uh, Beirut lost 85% of its grain stores when that thing went up. And uh, I've heard that they only have about a month, a month's worth of grain left. So we'll see what happens with that. And then you've got Corona Chan, uh, the country's most productive, this is America they're referring to, most productive farmland is one of the worst COVID-19 hotspots. And it's talking about California, but this is a problem all across the country. They've got uh, farm workers being infected and officials are shutting down the farms because of it. Now, whether you agree with that or not, at the end of the day, that's going to affect the food supply also. Um, and then you've got stuff like this. There was a, a fire that swept through, I believe this was in Pakistan, it was in Iran, I'm sorry. Uh, it swept through a, a livestock company, which I, I believe is like a veiled term for a factory farm. So that's a, like a politicized term, so they, they don't want to use it. But I think that's what most people are familiar with uh, as far as what you would call that. But uh, whatever the case, um, a lot of animals died in that fire. And those are those are all that was a meat commodity. So, um, and then here we have a, a market, a food market that burned in the UAE. The fire ended up spreading to several food storage warehouses, um, and there was a, a similar fire. He mentions it here in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, at a food market also, and so all that food was lost. Um, and then hop to Sudan, where they're, they're already experiencing famine to such a degree that they've had to eat the seeds that they were going to plant next season. So, you know, that's, that's double trouble right there. They're starving now, and they're not going to be able to grow food next year. And then, these are in no particular order. I just sort of opened them up uh, so I could run through them with you. Uh, no meat on the shelves. Supermarket warns of impending food shortages. Now, part of this is because of Corona. I'm sure you've heard about the uh, um, the processing plants being closed down. And uh, when the restaurants shut down, it affected food prices to such a degree that a lot of animals were culled for no reason. Um, there's a, There was a, a, a big milk dumping problem where milk, it just wasn't worth it to sell. And so they, they the unions, the co-ops, they said, dump your milk or else, you know, it's going to, you can't sell it. It's going to ruin the, uh, the, uh, the milk prices even more. So we need to, we need to get rid of it so that milk is worth, <laughs> milk holds its value, you know, um, and then one thing I meant to pull up, that's why I got a little distracted while I was looking at this, because I thought about it and um, I, meant to, I meant to pull it up so I could show you, but there's a massive uh, outbreak of bird flu in Australia um, at, a, at, a, at a poultry facility that had 42,000 birds, if I recall and over half of them tested positive. So there's gonna be mass callings out there and that's all chicken tendies that no one's gonna eat. So I figured I'd, I'd record this and then edit it in just for the sake of clarity. But uh, this is the, the bird flu outbreak in Victoria, Australia that I mentioned. It was 43,000 birds that had 21.7 thousand cases of H7N7 bird flu at their free range egg farm. So that's gonna put a massive dent in the food supply because not only are those eggs not going to be getting produced, I imagine they can't sell them uh, once they've, they've found this out, but uh, the, uh, the egg birds, the chickens, they do, they are you know, sold for meat once they stop laying. Um, and then we've got the, uh, the African swine fever that's been ravishing China. 
uh, I believe since 2018, but it uh, it was definitely ramping up across 2019. Um, and it may have been earlier than that, I'm not even sure, to be honest. Uh, but um, that was a third of 100 million pigs. That's a third of China's overall pork supply, which accounts for a quarter of the world's pig population. So that's a massive hit to pork right there. Uh, just wanted to shoehorn that in real quick. And, you know, this all, like I said before, this is all going to affect prices. Um, not only is there going to be less food, but the food that you can get is going to be more expensive, uh, which, you know, goes to, goes back to the, uh, the inflation that's talked about in uh, Revelations. Uh, I think it's Revelation 6.6. 6. It talks about the, uh, the, the, what is it, the barley and the wine or whatever. I don't know, man. But, uh, yeah, anyway, on with the original video. Uh, and then you go to China. Everything is gone. Flooding in China ruins farmers and risks rising food prices. So you've probably heard about the China floods. I know I posted about them a bit, but this is China's breadbasket that's flooding. Um, it produces most of their corn, most of their grain, and a lot of their rice. And when it comes to grain, China, if I remember right, they're responsible for 65% of the world's grain supply. So a lot of that grain supply comes out of this flood area. So it's not going to be around. Um, so, you know, all those people who are stacking up boxes of spaghetti, um, I hope you've still got them because that that's going to be a hot commodity before too long. Uh, and then here's another uh, a fire at a chicken facility in Pennsylvania killed 42,000 chickens. Maybe that's where I get the 42,000 that I was thinking of with the, the uh, oh, the, uh, the bird flu outbreak. But it, at any rate, it was tens of thousands of chickens that, that are being culled from that bird flu. And uh, then you've got the, this fire killing all these chickens. That's going to affect things. Then you've got farmers declaring bankruptcy. Uh, farm, Farmageddon continues as bankruptcies rise 8%. You can see this little image here of uh, all the, the bankruptcies, the chapter 12 farm bankruptcies in the last 12 months. And it's just all the way across the board. Uh, Patagonia reels from one of the worst winters in 20 years, agricultural emergency declared. And then we've got um, more than 5.6 million affected, 109 killed, and 260,000 hectares of crop area destroyed by floods in Assam, India. So, and that's, that's just Assam. Uh, India is experiencing massive flooding, just like China, they've got the same same weather patterns pretty much so they're having a lot of trouble out there with that probably going to be a lot of food shortages associated with with those floods as well and then here's uh something from the info wars food prices rise to dangerous levels as a second wave of layoffs hits the economy so just just more more to show you that the damn food prices are going up Extreme floods, COVID-19, China's food shortage fears. Um, this is from the Iowa Climate Science Education website. And uh, basically, they're, because of the weather, a lot of the food that they stored uh, to, to save for an emergency is rotting. So not only do you have food going bad in the fields, you've got food rotting in the silos and then China just bought this is exactly what I was talking about with the uh, the world food supply China bought the largest uh, shipment of US corn ever just recently I think this was uh, about a week or two ago so they're already starting to buy up our stuff and uh, 
you know, if we don't, if, if something isn't done to stop them, then the corporations that own that corn are going to sell it to them. It's just how it goes. Uh, rain in Spain has caused a loss of almost half of the cherry production. So that's, that's another thing, you know, the cherries just aren't getting grown because they're getting drowned out. Maybe it's not flooding, but you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of types of plants are pretty delicate to the weather. It doesn't have to be catastrophic. It just has to be more than the plants can handle and they're going to fold. Then you've got labor shortages and heat wave could push Estonian fruit and vegetable reserve preserves prices higher. So, you know, it's just, just another example. I could probably find more of this crap if I really looked, but, um, you know, I think that'll, that'll do it there. Uh, so I just wanted to push this out and tell everyone, you know, that it's, you know, a lot of people seem to think this is over. They've, they thought it was going to be worse faster, and I did as well. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to get worse from here. Uh, I think we should still be putting back food, still be uh, getting ready for whatever is about to happen, whether it's a slow burn or whether... You know, an asteroid's gonna hit. I don't know, man. But uh, at any rate, you should be ready for this because uh, it, it's looking like World War III is on the horizon. I don't think anyone's actually gonna use any nukes, but they might. But you've got you've got your pestilence, you've got your war, and you've got your famine. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the end times, man. I'm just gonna say it. If you, I'm going to link also to the video and the, the page that I read from uh, about Mother Shipton. And uh, I just want a quick disclaimer. I was even more tired than I am now when I made that Mother Shipton video. So I'm sorry if it sounds like crap, but bear with it. But like I said, I'll, I'll drop the source material also. So you can just go through that if you prefer. But, um, you know, her prophecies are unfolding right now as well. Um, and then you've got like the Hopi prophecies, which, I mean, you read that and you think about the world for five minutes and it, it sounds about right. There's a number of, of eschatology that seems to be happening right now. Uh, so whatever you want to believe, even if, even if all you do is, is look at the headlines and read the writing on the wall and you don't want to you don't want to believe in god or uh you know prophecy or whatever fine but it's it should be very apparent to everyone that things are getting bad i mean the only way it isn't that it shouldn't be apparent is uh if you aren't paying attention so i guess that's what i was trying to do is make a little wake-up call here but um yeah, I might be faking gay. Who knows? Feel free to uh, feel free not to listen to me. But uh, I've been right about an awful lot so far this year. So I um, guess that's about all I got. Take it easy, guys.